Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my GE only account. In this series, my account is going to be locked to the Grand Exchange with only a couple of basic rules. No trading other players, no picking up items on the ground that other players have dropped, as well as never leaving the Grand Exchange area. The ultimate goal of this account is to get 1000 total level, which is going to require me to experiment with interesting money makers, training methods, and anything else I can think of to get those 1000 total levels. Now over the last 4 episodes I have been focusing on money making and today we're finally going to start investing that into some of the more expensive training methods. I've made a ton of progress this week, I'm really excited to share it. As always guys, if you enjoyed the series I always appreciate it if you leave the video a like, it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much and let's get started. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the stats today. Uh, we're at 619 total level, which is awesome. Uh, we still have a couple of level 1 skills to train up, mainly defense and ranged. I'm definitely going to tackle those very soon, although defense doesn't really make sense to train up first, as imps don't really do any damage. Now the goal today is to get as many total levels as possible, regardless of how much that costs us. Obviously, I'm not going to blow through all of my money, but I'm going to spend some of it. Now one really interesting thing I did this week is actually I crushed superior dragon bones. I did a thousand here and you can see I profited actually 280k from that. A really good money maker although it costs a ton of money to get started with it but you know what that's pretty easy money I might consider doing that a bit more in the future. Okay there we go there's another 600 of them which brought us in another 180k in profit. No experience for it though but you can crush these things really quickly with a pestle and mortar. This is way better than crushing bird nests for example. Okay so we have a couple items in the bank that I want to sell off here just so we can get a general look at how much money we have. We have a thousand topaz bracelets that we were buying over the last three days pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and process the topaz bracelets and hopefully by the time we're done our diamond dragon bolts will also have sold off as we'll have a good idea of how much money I have to work with. Uh, we're actually just about to get a magic level here, we're about halfway through the topaz bracelets. There is level 68 magic, I don't think we get anything too useful at this level. Enchanting dragonstone jewelry, yeah that could be kind of nice actually. Now in my bank I also had a bunch of unstrung magic longbows, we're just finishing those off here and we got another fletching level, 87 fletching, by far our highest level skill. Okay so we have a bunch of stuff to sell here, uh, we ended up actually getting a 290 GP profit on the bracelet of slaughters which means we got around 300k in profit just for doing some magic training, that's great. Uh, we also got another 350k on the diamond dragon bolts and everything else that is a bit of money. But after collecting we're up to 15 mil plus whatever we have in the bank, 16 million GP on my GE locked only account, that is pretty nice to see. That said though, today we're probably going to spend some of that so it's most likely going to go down. Oh look at that guys, it finally happened, 3 imps stuck in the exact same corner. After combat training for nearly 10 hours now, that's the first time that's ever happened. Exciting stuff. Well I guess not really. Maybe I've been killing imps just way too long now. Okay, so a big level coming in here, and that is level 30 strength. Now I got some really good advice in the last episode, and that had to do with strength training. Getting your strength up is still going to be the best option because it does increase my potential max hit, which is actually more beneficial than getting a higher attack level with more accuracy. Now in the last episode, I started off with some agility training, but one thing that came to my attention is actually the toy doll might be the best item to use for agility training. Now what's interesting about this is the toy doll actually gives less experience than a toy mice. Uh, the toy doll gives 2.5 experience versus the toy mice which gives 3. With that said though, apparently the toy doll is much easier to catch, which in the end would lead to much higher experience rates and just less trouble. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and try it with the toy doll instead and see if the experience rates are any better. With the toy mice I was getting maybe 1000 to 1500 experience per hour so it was very bad. One other thing here I'm going to be doing is configuring my shift click uh, so we can shift click release them that is going to be very useful as well. 
I think these might be a little bit quicker. Look at this thing run. Oh my god. Uh, well, despite that, the toy doll is definitely much easier to pick up. So I'm definitely going to experiment with this for a bit. Yeah, look at that. Like instantly pick them up versus the toy mouse, which would end up running around for days and it would have to chase them down. Okay, I've refined my strategy a little bit here. Essentially, all I'm doing is releasing two of the toy dolls. I immediately click down because one of them always likes to run away. How about that? <laughs> and then I click up for the other one. Using this method, I have been able to get up to about 3.5 thousand experience per hour, although not consistently. Regardless though, there is level 15 agility, a really awesome milestone. It took me about an hour to get from level 5, so yeah, it's pretty slow. I'm not sure what level I can get to before I totally freak out to maybe level 30. Okay, so I said I was going to make a couple investments this episode, and the first one I want to do is in crafting. And I just realized that crafting green dragonhide bodies is really, really cheap. At the current prices, crafting green dehyde body only costs about 1.3 GP to XP, which is incredibly cheap for one of the better training methods that can give over 300k per hour crafting experience. Better yet, if I decide to ALK them, I will actually profit. Not a bad idea really, because generally it's very hard to get that level of bulk dehyde body, so it's probably a good opportunity. Uh, so let's start with 6,000 green dehyde leather, and we'll see where that gets us. I'm actually very surprised how cheap uh, skilling supplies have gotten. I mean, crafting is really cheap. Cooking is incredibly cheap. There are extremely quick training methods out there that are also very cost effective. For example, getting all the way to 99 crafting might only cost me around 10 to 12 mil. Honestly, the only really expensive viable skills that there's not really a cost effective way to train are herb lore and prayer. Realistically though, we're probably going to save those for last. There is level 70 crafting. That is awesome. We can now make diamond amulets, which isn't particularly useful uh, because we don't have a furnace, but uh, that's an awesome milestone. I don't really think getting a high level crafting will have many benefits after where we are now. We could of course unlock quicker training methods, but man, green dragonite bodies are so cost effective and you can get around 300k per hour experience. So I think I'm probably going to do this all the way to 99. It doesn't really make sense to pay four or five times more just for a minor boost in experience when my money making methods are just so limited. Okay, so I made it through all 6,000 Dragonhide and that got us to a level 71 crafting from, I believe, 65. Uh, so a very nice boost in experience and we have 2,000 green Dragonhide bodies. Now I mentioned I was going to ALK them, but I'm kind of curious how much it costs just to straight up sell the bodies. Uh, so for this first lot here, I'm probably just going to sell them off directly uh, for around 4,200. Okay, so while I was waiting for those to sell off, I decided to go ahead and enchant uh, some topaz jewelry. Uh, we've done a few burning amulets and some bracelets of slaughter, but that ended up getting us all the way to 70 magic, another great milestone. Now while we were doing that, all of the green dehyde bodies sold off, and we didn't really lose much money at all. I think overall we lost 274k, which for hundreds of thousands of experience is incredibly cheap. The next time I do think alking them will be an excellent idea. Generally, alking isn't a great high level magic training method, but when you can't leave the Grand Exchange, it becomes one of the better ones that are available. Definitely not the quickest method by any means, but the quickest method that you can actually profit while doing. But yeah, looking pretty nice. We're up to 643 total level. Okay, so we have two more skills that currently are level one that are trainable, and that is ranged and defense. The few imps that roam through the Grand Exchange are honestly a godsend. There are so many total levels you can get from combat because there's ranged, hit points, attack, strength, and defense. Now it really does make sense for me to train them up in tandem, that way I don't waste a ton of time getting one way higher than the other, because the end goal of course is to get a thousand total level, and that leaves me a lot more flexibility with which skills to train if I get them up around the same level. 
So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be buying the best ranged armor gear that we can wear, which is not very good because our defense is still level 1. Uh, we're going to be using darts. We're going to start here with iron darts, then probably move up here to mithril darts. As we don't have an Ava's accumulator, it's just going to be too annoying and expensive to move up to adamant darts or higher. But mithril darts are just so dirt cheap from people doing fletching that I don't even have to really worry about picking them up. Okay, so we can move on now from the iron dart up to the steel darts. Uh, we bought 2,000. I think that might be enough to get us to 20, but uh, I'm not sure. Okay, is that someone's beaver pet that just got stuck? I've seen this before, and I thought it was just someone's pet, but it's in the exact same place now. That is really interesting. I don't know what that's about. There is level 10 ranged. I think we can now finally hit a 2, maybe? Okay, we just hit level 20 ranged and level 29 hit points at the exact same time. Uh, 20 range is good because we can now buy the Mithril Dart, which is going to be the best option for a long time now. We're still rocking the coif and leather body and leather chaps because uh, we need defense levels, I think, to wear pretty much anything else. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and collect our Grand Exchange offers here. Uh, we ended up making about 200k on the Burning Amulet, which is pretty good for a profitable magic training method. But finally now we can go ahead and buy some mithril darts. Uh, we're going to go ahead and buy a full buying limit for 5 coins each I believe. Mithril darts are actually cheaper than iron and steel just because of how many people train it just as a fletching training method. Pretty interesting even though they are objectively better. Uh, we're still level 1 defense uh, so I think our only gear upgrade right now is a coif. I don't really think buying an archer's ring is necessary. <laughs> Although I could theoretically afford one. Hey, there we go guys, there's level 30 hit points, that is kind of a little blue. Okay, and finally, about 3 hours later, we finally hit 30 ranged. Uh, ranged actually is proving to be as quick, if not quicker, than my melee stats, which is pretty interesting because normally it's the opposite. While my max hit is very low right now, that doesn't matter that much because the monster I'm fighting has low hit points anyway. Okay, so there we go, we sold off all of our bracelets of slaughter for about a 250k profit. I am actively trying to buy more Topaz bracelets, but no luck really. Now today I wanted to tackle a bit more Herblore training, and this is probably going to be my most expensive investment into a skill yet, I would imagine. Now pretty much exactly at level 52, Herblore we can make uh, super energy potions, which are pretty cost effective. Now prayer potions are quite a bit cheaper GP to XP, but they also cost more to do as far as a total investment. So because of that, we're going to go ahead and do Evanto Potions instead, and I think we can just afford maybe 5,000 of them. This will get us a significant amount of Herblore experience and should cost us about 6 GP to XP or somewhere around there. Uh, so we're starting at level 52 Herblore, and I'm very curious how much this costs and how many levels I can get. Actually, not too long later, we already got up to level 60 Herblore. That only took... Uh, 20 minutes or something, not even. Really goes to show how expensive Herblore is in comparison. This method is pretty much the exact same speed as making green dehyde bodies, yet it's six times more expensive or something. There is level 65 Herblore. At this point, we're about halfway through all of our ingredient items. Now, if you're wondering why I'm running into the corner here, every five or ten minutes I'm gonna run outside of the Grand Exchange area in hopes of getting a random event. I've gotten lucky a couple times just running out there for a couple seconds. So we're just trying to incorporate that into our training because otherwise most of the things we do are right by the bank. There was level 69 Herb Lore. No, I didn't just stop here to make the most overused joke of all time. That is legitimately the last level I think we're going to get from the 5,000 Super Energy Potions. <laughs> okay, so that is it. That took about two hours to go through all of the Super Energy Potions. It was pretty chill and we gained a ton of Herb Lore experience, gaining us around 15 Herb Lore levels I think. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and sell these off. First up here, we're going to decant them though. Generally, I would highly recommend decanting your potions. You will almost always get more money, and they're going to sell off much quicker as well. Okay, super energy potions are right now going for 2900 That actually seems kind of on the higher end right now, uh, so hopefully we get that price point. But there's no doubt in my mind that we definitely lost a serious amount of money. Okay, so the moment of truth. How much money did we lose on these super energy potions? Well, we ended up losing 1.8 million GP, which sounds like a lot of money in comparison to how much I have. Yet, the GP to XP was actually really good. I think we got kind of lucky just on the different price points that were available at the time. Because our overall GP to XP on that was actually 3, which is nearly twice as cheap as what the wiki was listing, so we got kind of lucky on that. 
Now, one thing I haven't actually got around to doing in a while is some woodcutting training. Uh, woodcutting is fairly quick compared to some of my other skills. I can get around 20k per hour woodcutting experience if I'm hopping between different worlds. The problem with that though is I don't have a chance of getting a random event then because you have to spend a certain amount of time in a world before you have a chance of getting one. Okay, we got a pretty important level coming up here and that's going to be level 41 woodcutting which means we can now unlock the rune axe which is going to increase our experience rates very slightly I would imagine. We're probably not going to get that big of a benefit of getting like the dragon axe for example. We're pretty much cutting the trees down instantly anyway. Okay, so I have one last skill that is at level 1 right now, and it just looks kind of awkward. So we're going to go deal with that, and that is of course defense. Now in general, I did say that it makes sense to wait till later, because I don't really need defense levels for any practical purpose. But we still might as well get it up, at least from level 1. Oh, I just noticed something guys, we hit a awesome total level milestone, and that is 700 total level. That is really awesome, only 300 more to go. Obviously the last 300 are going to be incredibly slow compared to the first 300, but it's still really good to see a nice clean number and the account is progressing really nicely. Now I went ahead and changed my goal sheet a little bit, mainly because one of them actually was unattainable. Apparently imp champion scrolls don't drop unless you have 32 quest points, didn't know that, uh, so we took that off there. I also decided to include total level milestones on here just because I think it would be kind of motivating. Uh, so there's another goal out of the way, 700 total level, looking good. He's back again, oh I don't know what to think about this. This beaver might become my new god. It's strange though, he's in the exact same position as last time. Is that someone's pet, does anyone know? And there we go, that is level 20 defense, so that is going to be my final level. Uh, for now at least, we can now wear a few different armor pieces, notably we can wear uh, some ranged training armor which will actually have a notable benefit. We also just hit level 32 hit points which is awesome. Bringing us up to 716 total level which is great. Anyway guys that is where I'm going to end it for today. This week was really productive. We ended up gaining a massive 98 total levels today which is huge. Now going forward though there's going to be nowhere left to hide. Some bigger grinds are ahead of us and I'm really excited for them. Today was mainly focused on getting any easy training out of the way, but going forward now, it's going to be pretty slow. Let me know with a comment down below if there's any methods you want me to try or what skill you want me to train next, because I am definitely open to suggestions. Now before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to one of my newest subscribers, James Luft, who just subscribed at the Dragon tier of YouTube membership, joining Brad Sings, Tizdok Bunny, Revolver Ocelot, and Kush Patel, all the Dragon tier. That's amazing guys, thank you so much. And also a huge shout out to Luke Kaiser, Base Titch, Heathen, OSRS, and Double Talk for your continued support. If you guys are looking for an additional way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You can become immortalized in some of my videos, get access to my video release schedule, as well as get a custom role in my Discord channel. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you next time.